Hello everyone, this is Ninja Girl Sakura One here, back with another Legend of Korra episode review. Today we have, of course, Book 4, Episode 10, Operation Bayfall. And let's just say this episode set up a lot for the finale. Kind of. But anyway, the episode begins with Bolin, Sue, Opal, and their flying bison arriving right near Zafu. Not in Zafu, but right near it. Like, on the hill right across the way that they can see everything. And they see that the metal domes are gone, that were over everyone's houses. And Kuvira has really taken over. And just before they're about to go in and try to rescue Sue and the rest of her family, none other than Toph shows up. And everyone is excited. Opal goes and gives her grandma a hug. And Bolin is ecstatic because, like he said in book three, Toph is his hero. So, pretty cool that he finally gets to meet her. And he even says that he's dating her granddaughter, but he may have messed that up. So, yeah. Really cute. And funny. Um, Toph then explains that they shouldn't really bother going to Zafu because everyone seems to be gone. All the prisoners seem to have been moved. She then explains how she knows that, and it's of course the fact that she can see things through the vines. So yeah. And then she says that she does not like Opal's flying bison because it has a runny nose, and she even says that eh, eh, Appa, excuse me, almost said Aang, Appa smelled better than her flying bison. But Opal explains that a flying bison chooses you, you don't choose it. And once you're picked, you don't change it. Which I believe is something Aang explained way back when. So yeah, nice that they are sticking to that from the original series. Then we see that President Raiko, Wu, Varric, and Asami are having a meeting. And Varric had apparently um, and Korra, of course. And Varric had apparently come up with um, a robot-like machine to try and combat Kavira's spirit spine cannon thing. But when Raiko asks if it has a weapon like Kavira's on it, Varric says no, that he doesn't want to use that technology. Which, of course, ticks off President Raiko. So, yeah. And then he asked Korra if she could somehow use the power of the vines to their advantage. And Korra, of course, being a good avatar, says no, she won't do that. Because even though she's a bridge between the spirit world and our world, she knows it's not a place to even dare try to do something like that. And obviously that would make her no better than Kuvira. So yeah. Wu then actually comes up with a good idea. Since they can't really do anything right now, he says the best thing to do is to evacuate everyone from a public city. Wow. Wu, of all people, comes up with a good idea. <laughs> Even Raiko is kind of impressed. So yeah, they agree that they should do that. But then when he goes and talks to Mako outside, outside of the meeting room, he ruins it by saying the only reason he even tried to do anything like that was to try and impress Korra because he still somehow thinks he has a shot. Seriously, Wu, take a hint. And even Mako is annoyed and even says, why do you do that? You finally make it look like you're shaping up to be a leader and be responsible, but then you turn around and say you only did it for a girl, basically. So, yeah. Very annoying. <laughs> then the scene switches to Pitar Jr. and Julie and a few guards working on the Spirit Vine machine. And when they try to test fire it, because there's a demonstration set to happen the following day, it nearly explodes. But before it does, Pitar Jr. actually finds the piece that was about to do that. And... He tells everyone that it had a crack, 
and to fix it immediately so that the demonstration can happen the next day for Kavira. So he's pushing everyone to really get things done on that machine. So, not good. Then we go back to Toph, Bolin, and everyone, and we learn that it's actually been 20 years since Lin and Toph had seen each other or spoke. So, yeah. Then they actually go to where Kuvira is based, and they try to basically do some investigation to try to find out what exactly they're dealing with. And Toph still, she's got it, she still uses her trick to feel the vibrations in the ground to find out for sure if anyone is actually being held captive in there. And both her and Lin actually sense that yes, there is someone being held in the facility in their warehouse, but they're being held up high so that they can't use earth bending or metal bending. So they figure out that's probably Sue and the rest of her family. So yeah. But then Kuvira, some guards, arrive and they have to hide immediately. And Kuvira basically asks Julie how things are going with the spirit bond machine and if she's doing everything possible to make it work. And Julie says, of course. But then Toph, being the human lie detector, can tell that Julie is actually lying. So now we know Julie was never on anyone but Varric's side. So yeah. She's been sabotaging the machine the whole time. But anyway. Yeah. And before they leave... Toph says that she really wants to save her family and she does want something to happen to them. And they pretty much are forced to leave. They wanted to still rescue the men, but they come up with a better idea. Since everyone is going to be at the demonstration for the Spirit Vine Cannon Machine the next day, they figure the warehouse will be empty and that's when they can make their move to rescue Sue and the rest of her family. So, yeah. They agree that that's a good idea and that they're going to save Sue and everyone else. Then we see Korra back at Republic City trying to get help from the spirits in the spirit wilds. But she notices that they are all vanishing. They are running away, fleeing Republic City. So that can't be good for anybody. So yeah. Then we get back to Toph and Bolin and... Uh, team Bay phone, basically. Let's just say that. And they're sitting around the fire, waiting for the next day so they can go take on this rescue mission. And Bolin is asking about metal bending. And Toph explains that she had a metal bending academy, which I believe is something from the comics, and that even a blockhead like Bolin should have been able to do it, but oh well. Bolin then says that he was able to learn lava bending at least, which actually impresses Toph, and she says Bolin has talent, which of course makes Bolin very, very happy <laughs> to hear that from his idol. So yeah. And then Bolin asks a certain question that a lot of us wanted to know the answer to. Who is Lin's dad? And he is apparently someone named Kanto. I believe that's somebody from the comics. I'm not sure. And we also learn that Lin is still very, very mad at Toph that she didn't grow up with a father and all that nonsense. Family drama. So, yeah. And Lin goes off on her and tells Toph that once Sue is rescued, she wants nothing more to do with her. She wants to cut ties, basically. So, yeah. The scene ends with its day, the day of the demonstration of the Spirit Vine Cannon, and the rescue mission. Both begin. So yeah. Right when they're about to start up the spirit weapon, Pitar Jr. notices that a some kind of safety pin, I think it was, that he had placed in the machine the previous day was now missing. 
Kuvira then gets suspicious and goes to Julie and asks if she knows anything about this. Julie at first says no, but then Kuvira metal bends the piece that was missing right out of her pocket. So, yeah, Julie is caught and in big trouble, and Kuvira says that she had given her a second chance, and that's what she does. So, yeah, Julie then says she thinks Kuvira is a monster, and she regrets none of it. And as punishment, Kuvira says to tie her up to um, one of the, um, it looks like a radio tower in the city that they're about to fire on, the abandoned Zalfu apparently, and she can see the power of the Spear of Vine Cannon up close and personal. So yeah, Julie is in big, big trouble. So yeah. Meanwhile, nearly everyone is rescued, except for Sue and her husband, and her husband is terrified that Bolin won't catch him because Toph can't catch everybody because she can't see, obviously. So yeah, Bolin is the one who's supposed to catch everyone, and he is scared, but Lin just forces him out of there and uses her metal bending cables to send him over so he can get away, and then they are actually seen. One of the guards comes in and actually sees everyone trying to escape, but they all manage to actually get out and run. Then they learn about what's going on with Julie, and that she's trapped in the abandoned Zalfu, so Bolin actually wants to go and help her. Because, obviously, Julie doesn't deserve this. So, yeah. Even though even Toph and Opal kind of protest to doing this, Bolin doesn't anyway, and Opal decides that she's gonna help. So, yeah. Meanwhile, we see Korra meditating and going into the spirit world, and once again, trying to ask the spirits for help. But the spirits basically say they don't want to be involved in a human war, and say no. Then the scene switches back to the Spear of Vine weapon demonstration, and just as they're about to fire it, Pitar Jr. sees it in the city, trying to save Julie, and tries to stop the demonstration, but can't. So, the weapon fires, but it does miss everyone, thankfully. No one actually gets hurt. So, yeah. And then an earth bending fight breaks out between everybody, and especially Sue and Kuvira. So, yeah. Just when they're about to be defeated, Toph manages to save everyone with her amazing earth bending. And of course, everyone is extremely grateful and happy. And they all get away. And Lynn even apologizes for what she had said. And Lynn says that while she wasn't a good mom, that good of a mom, she did raise two pretty great kids. And she basically just says she loves her daughters and is very proud of them. And when asked if she's going to stay and go back to Republic City, she says no, that her fighting days are over. And that's also why Katara didn't get involved in the Water Tribe Civil War thing in Book 2. They're just... It's past their time, and it's time to leave everything to the new generation. So, yeah. Bolin and Opal then make up, and then Julie drops the bombshell. Kuvira is planning to attack Republic City in two short weeks. So, yeah, things are really heating up. But, yeah... That is my review. Pretty good episode. We now have three left. Next week is going to be the final episode before the two-part finale. So yeah, be prepared for that. But I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will see you guys with another horror review next Friday. But until then, see you guys later.